Okay, peace. I want to come to you live uh, from Central America, specifically uh, Guatemala. Um, today, I just want to just catch up with everybody. Uh, some of my subscribers are probably thinking, okay, what's going on? He's throwing up videos. Um, no explanation. Just kind of just throwing them up. Well, <sighs> lo que pasa. <laughs> what happened is that um, I've been in Latin America going on like three weeks now. Uh, I, went, I traveled through Mexico, saw Mexico City, saw some Oaxaca City, San, Cristo, San, San Cristobal de las Casas. Um, and I'm traveling because I have a passion to learn other cultures. It enriches you when you travel. Um, it makes you more humble because you're living and existing in another person's culture and you have to adjust. You have to uh, you know, control your natural instincts to do your cultural practice and humbly observe other people's cultural practice and respect that. That's if you're somebody who, you know, is respectful, um, as opposed to just coming in and just assuming your ways is the right way, which isn't true, which, is, which isn't the way to do it. But um, I'm out here learning a whole bunch. Um, I made I put those videos about coming to Mexico because I'm trying to encourage people to do that and to realize that we can't live based off of fear. We can't live based off of what's on the television. When I was a youth coming up, I used to be terrified of the news. I didn't understand my fear as a as a child. It was just there was always a rapist being shown. There was always a terrorist attack or something dangerous happening. Something uh, it was fear mongering always on the television. And to this day, I don't like the news via social media or on the television or in any type of outlet. I still absorb it in a degree, in a controlled manner. But the truth is that we're fed fear so that we don't act. I've I've met and ha I've had some of the most amazing time in my 25 years, almost 25 years living on this planet in Mexico, traveling, meeting people. Um, just last week, I met this beautiful sister. I'm hopefully gonna see her again soon um, on the bus. And we talked about um, the certain frequencies, meditational music. Um, we talked about, and this is all in Spanish. She's telling me this stuff. I'm trying to keep up with her, but I, you know, obviously I'm doing my best. But she's talking to me about the Aquarian age, how we're in the age of change and the age of, uh, not the age of change, but the age of, uh, of knowledge now. We're in the age of information and how all things are being revealed. We talked about symbols. We talked about, you know, love and abundance, living in abundance, not living in the system and in the box. So there's a lot of eating healthy nutrition. There's a lot of beautiful vegetarianism. We, there's a lot of beautiful things that are going on all over the world. Beauty exists in all, in all planets. You see what I'm saying? Actually, Central America and Mexico, which is part of North America, that region has some of the most high spiritual vibrations on the planet including like india certain parts of africa different parts of the world but with these temples and pyramids that have been here over two thousand years and the way that they're lined up and set with the sun and lined up also some of the measurements are almost exactly the same as the ones in ancient Kemet, ancient egypt or or the ones that are current currently in egypt but that were built in ancient egypt this is a highly spiritual place, so you'll find good energy in Latin America and Central America. You have to be careful just like any other place. But my point is just that I've seen beauty here. I've been traveling to expand my consciousness. I've been traveling to expand my country, uh, comfort zone. But I want to come to you live and talk just briefly. Um, I'm in my my, um, my homestay room I have right here. It's a little, um, a little frazzled dazzled. Um, I just got here. I've been here for like a week, but I've been in Latin America for a couple a couple weeks, maybe three weeks. And so I've been here for like, not even a week, but four, four days. Um, but I want to come to you and talk about your worthiness and how I realized that I was worthy of everything that I desired, everything that I needed. Um, and once you realize that, everything changes. Everything comes to you and the door is open. Because only you can give yourself permission to live your dream. Only you can give yourself permission to be yourself in this, your higher self, your best self. Or as one of my brothers, um, Ralph Smart said, he helped me, one of his videos helped me just totally wake up, um, become your greatest version. So only you hold that key. Nobody else is in your head pulling you down or stopping you. Nobody else is... Is, is, is in your subconscious. There may be other people's ideas or thoughts, but it's your subconscious. You're responsible for it. 
it's your mind. You're responsible for it. It's your heart. It's your emotions. You're responsible for it. When you realize how worthy you are, everything changes. And that's why I'm out here because I had the opportunity to get out here because I realized my worth. Now, I do want to say, though, that um, I'm going to talk about, come to you talked about nutrition because that's my passion. But I want to say, once you realize your real, true worth, not only does everything change physically, spiritually, emotionally, but what you eat changes. And the fact of the matter is you realize that you're worthy of eating as much organic food as possible. You're worthy of eating as much healthy food as possible because you are li you are the temple of the living God. It says that in basically all the holy books that have been written since the beginning of time because there has been a consistent message that's been trying to be handed down and conveyed to man is that God is within you. Yes, God is without, without and around around you but god is within you you are the temple of the living god so if you are the temple of the living god how can you say that you don't deserve organic food how can you say that organic food is too expensive for you how can you say that it's not it doesn't have that many nutrients or how can you say these things i'm here to talk to you about the organic food i'm here to talk to you about your work i'm here to talk to you about how you deserve to eat healthy briefly organic food what is organic once upon a time the whole planet only grew organic food Man has been cultivating food for thousands of years, you know what I mean, starting, um, I mean, everyone, every part had its, you know, it's done, uh, but, you know, starting in Mesopotamia, the Nile Valley, um, we started cultivating over in China, started cultivating, getting down um, different parts of Africa and also in Latin America. The thing is, is that foods used to just grow wild, like wild rice, quinoa, there's different uh, varieties of maize or um, corn that just straight up just grew, straight up just, uh, excuse me, straight up just grew wild. Um, and we would just eat eat that in its natural state. Eventually we started cultivating things and bringing it in, making hybrids, combining certain foods, certain plants with other f plants. Um, these are ancient processes. In one of my other videos I talked about how the lemon is an ancient hybrid. People are banging on hybrids. Hybrids have been around for tens of thousands of years for thousands of years as long as we've been eating food the hybrids have been around the thing is is that when you're genetically modifying food and creating food genetically you're causing problems when you're just taking you're altering the nutrient rich richness for um durability during rain seasons and durability during floods and durability against having blights which are like um sicknesses of plants basically like if some type of blight or some type of disease comes and it starts spreading and killing all the wheat it could be a famine and people thousands of people could die so what we did was we we kept certain plants and bred those plants with plants that lived through those blights through those sicknesses but sometimes they lost other benefits so if you look at spelt kamu amaran you'll find amaran excuse me you'll find that those plants have more those wheats and grains have more nutrients than like the standard wheat because the wheat has been cultivated and hybridized for years, thousands of years, over and over, so it's lost some of its nutrients. But what I'm basically coming to you, I'm, I'm dropping different areas of science right now, but what I wanna say is that you're worthy of amaranth, because it has the highest nutrient content. You're worthy, of, you're worthy of quinoa. You're worthy of the organic food because that is not genetically altered. That's not drenched in, pe in pesticides and herbicides. What's the difference between organic and inorganic? Okay. In the U.S., like I said, once upon a time, all our foods were organic. But in the U.S., there's a process. It's a three-year process where farmers, three years, people think it's just all organic. It's just another label. It's BS. No. For whole foods, fruits, vegetables, three-year process, foods that are grown straight out of the ground, three-year process for a farmer to churn, convert their farm to a from a regular farm to an organic farm. So that means you have to cultivate the soil for three years without using chemical processing or chemical chemicals, um, pesticides, herbicides, as I mentioned. Um, these things are strong. You watch these documentaries that are being put out on Monsanto. Um, it's been so long that I studied this stuff. I've been studying it for years. I can't throw out exact names just now, but you got the internet. Look up Monsanto, Monsanto um, Agent Orange. Look up Monsanto, um, uh, you know, negative pesticides. Look up these different things and do the knowledge. Do the knowledge mean get study. Study well. Research. 
anything that I say, research it and, and prove it to yourself because that way it'll become a part of yourself and it's going to be yours. Um, yeah, so you don't deserve, if you're worthy of, 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 if you're priceless, if you're the temple of the living God, you don't deserve genetically modified food. You deserve the best fuel for your body. Three years of process, a, a three-year process of converting the farm to non, to from non-organic to organic. This three-year process allows the, the soil to become richer. The organic soil is richer. The seeds that are planted, the seeds hold all the keys to the food, to the to the plants, to everything that's growing. The seed feeds off of, and the roots feed off of the soil that they're planted in. If you're in a poor soil or you're in a enrich, artificially enriched soil versus a naturally enriched soil, you're eating artificial food. And what do they say? You are what you eat. Now, once you start loving yourself 100%, I've been dealing with my man, Ralph Smart. Shout out to Ralph Smart. Once you start loving yourself 100%, you're going to realize that, yo, I deserve organic food because I love myself 100%. I deserve the higher nutrient content that's found in organic foods because they're planted in a richer soil. Now you may go and compare some organic kale to non-organic kale. Oh man, looks pretty much the same nutrient content. This is the deal. There are so many nutrients that haven't even been discovered by nutritionists. By I'm a dietitian. Watch my other videos. Went to school, totally registered, licensed, all of that. I'm here to tell you that there are some, actually there are thousands, there's so many that we are undiscovered, called phytonutrients, nutraceuticals, phytochemicals, that haven't even been discovered by man. Now, these organic foods are going to have more of these because they're in a natural growth environment versus something that is chemically or genetically altered. Now. There haven't been enough longitudinal studies to check and see what's happening. The human, actually, the human population is changing because of what is being consumed, what is consuming. You, we talk about mutants and all that stuff that we see on television. Human beings are actually changing because their GI tract, they're absorbing and eating foods that um, they haven't, they hadn't ate in centuries before. So the children are being born um, with different abilities and capabilities. And I'm not trying to sound spooky. This is a, this is actual facts. Um, there was a time when the population on the planet was lactose intolerant. We couldn't digest lactose at the level that we're digesting it now. Why? Because we're not actually supposed to be drinking cow's milk. It's for baby cows. It's not for adult humans. That's not political. It's just fact. Science. It's physiology. It's nutrition. But because over thou not thousands of years, but over hundreds of years we've been drinking this, the population is changing. Certain people can digest it. And these people their gi is a sort of a mutation over time so you have people eating this organic in, inorganic junk food not just the inorganic fruits and vegetables inorganic junk food they're going to be changing their descendants are going to change over time it may seem crazy but you guys will see in the future this is going to be timeless this information we're putting out here these non-organic and also specifically genetically modified foods being put out now they're going to change people down the line now, what is all this saying? It's saying one, you're worthy of the best. I'm worthy of the best. We're worthy of the best. That means if you, were to, if you, if you honor your temple, you live in the temple of the, of, the, of the true and living God, you need to put the best fuel in there. Now, which foods are the best to eat organic? I want to tell you straight out what you want to get that's organic. You want to rock with your fruits and vegetables that's organic because you can't. Your, le your lettuce, that's low on the ground. Your, that's, that means it's going to be exposed to a lot of things, sprayed with a lot of things. Your spinach, your kale, all these gr leafy greens, you want to rock with those organic. Um, you want to rock with, uh, you know, your fruits organic. If you're dealing with a banana, yeah, it hasn't been sprayed directly uh, when it's been grown. But guess what? The soil is is sprayed. The, 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 the whole... It, it, uh, ambiance or environment is, is is covered in is covered or saturated with the pesticides and the and the, and the chemicals. So it's really just the fruits and veggies. Now, when you go into like packaged cereal, processed organic, cool products and snacks and stuff, those you can rock with. Those are better organic. But really, the high vibratory rate foods, the best 
in return for your investment in organic foods are going to be found in the produce section. You want to eat in the produce section because it's going to help you be productive. Again, I remember I used to go to the grocery store when I was in college and all, basically all my food was from the produce section. And they'd be like, man, all your stuff is produce. And I'd be like, yeah, it keeps me productive. So you want to get more energy. You want to be more productive. You want your kids to be more focused, more obedient, have more energy on the football team, and give them more organic foods. So you got a higher nutrient content. You got a higher vibration. Less uh, impact on the environment. Less impact on the body. You got pregnant women eating these foods, genetically modified. We don't even have longitudinal studies to see what can possibly happen over 10 year, 15 year, 20 year period. We've only, they've only just been introduced. They're not labeling the foods, but guess what? You eat organic, you, you know that it doesn't have the chemical pesticides, herbicides, and you know automatically it's not genetically modified because it can be genetically modified and organic, right? So, um, there's only one food that can be genetically modified and still labeled organic, and that's soy. Uh, about 90% of the soy that's produced is genetically modified. So that's a whole other story. But besides that, that's a benefit. You know that it's not genetically modified, and you know that it doesn't have those pesticides, and it has higher uh, phytonutrient content, and overall it has uh, trace minerals, higher. it's higher in trace minerals. So the thing is, um, is that we, we live in a time sometimes, you know, people are in a, are in poverty. People are living in poverty. Um, I was living in poverty, but it was up here. Now I'm living in abundance. I'm in Latin America traveling. Um, I have multiple streams of income coming in. Shout out to, like I said again, um, my bro, Ralph, Ralph Smart. Um, before getting put on to, you know, Ralph Smart, I knew about the, uh, the, the multiple streams of income, but it wasn't to his certain delivery that I really started going for it, shooting for it, you know, jumping at it. Multiple streams of income living in abundance. We have to work on the poverty, scarcity, mind state. You are the source. You are abundance. You are worthy of organic food. You're worthy of the best foods. You're worthy of the best of everything in every aspect of your life. So relationship, food, um, your bank account, your clothes, everything. You are worthy of the best. Not decadence, but you are worthy of the best in abundance. So change your mind state. We buy, we can spend a dollar on some Reese's or some Snickers or some Hot Cheetos, but we can't spend $2 for some organic kale or $3 for some organic kale. That's going to vivify you. That's going to bring, that's brain food, purify your blood, get your bones strong. Other stuff is destructive. So that's going to give you more fuel, fuel to become richer in mind, body, and soul. You see what I'm saying? So that's why we need to eat organic. It's not a truth movement. It's not a fad, a green movement. We are organic. We are organic people. My people have been around since the earth's been around. You see what I'm saying? They say we come from monkeys and stuff like that. People want to play games with that. We've been around We've been around since the earth's been around. You got the Andaman Islands. You got the sisters and brothers on the Andaman Islands. They've been around for 60,000 years. Their language alone is over 60,000 years old. You got the Aborigines, indigenous in Australia. They, they've been on the island for over... 40,000, 50,000 years. So we organic. That's why we need to eat organic. It's not a fad. We, we've been eating organic from the beginning, living to be, over, to be over 100. So yeah, we should be eating organic. It is what it is. We deserve the organic. We are organic. We the ones. See what I'm saying? We're the organic people. So eat organic. You're worthy of it. Invest. People want to invest in stocks. People trying to figure out how to make a quick buck. Invest in food. Invest in healthy food. That's going to give you back the energy to do more things. That's going to give you the brain power, the nutrients, the muscle, the muscle power, the energy to do more. So you want to invest in something, invest in your health, invest in yourself, invest in your wealth. I love y'all. Peace.